Hello and welcome to Finding Your Atom series. I'm here with my friend and partner in crime. And this guy is not part in crime, but partner in inspiration. I'm Rita Sen. And we are here again to find the atom, the smallest unit of ordinary matter that forms the chemical elements of life. What makes us special? What makes us go forward? And as well, what uh, inspires us in the moments of strength, the moments of weakness, especially in the moments where we find who we are, or at least we have some kind of clear evidence in terms of these things. We've been sharing these moments with very special people, and uh, it's been an honor to, I would say, feature these people within this kind of very interactive sessions where we actually speak, brainstorm, and talk about almost everything. And today we have with us a very special friend, that I would say a friend, but uh, I met her for lo- not a long time, but some probably friend in mind, together with Amrita, that is Valentina um, Castiglione, Queen, that is a very special person. I think uh, for people that are listening to us, probably saw the interview I did with her, which I recommend to see. But today is different. We're going to be talking about much more, I would say, non-dimensional parts and as well, something that will take us a bit in a different journey that I think is important for all of us. And I'll pass the context for Amrita because she's always the, I would say, the provocateur in, in place that will be bringing a bit of a inner chaos, but an inner order as well for this series. Well, thanks so much, Dennis. You know, I had an opportunity to meet Valentina uh, by phone last week, and I was giving some thought to how we can tackle this particular episode because Valentina, as you will learn today, is so diverse, so accomplished and so uh, learned that it is hard to tackle with a person like her um, all all the inspiration you can get, all the topics you wanna cover, all the things you wanna sit and and over dinner and talk with her about. So uh, I thought very carefully of how do we give our audience um, a manageable way to get inside her mind and her spirit and her and her way of being in a way that's not intimidating, in a way that we can a- absolutely come come away with with some sort of oh yeah, this is what I have to do. So it did require nearly a week <laughs> for me to think through this. And when I think about my life and all the people I've met, and I think of what Valentina has done with her movie career, I think, wow, this is a person who is really, has a very strong core, but it's expanded her network quite well. So we, cu- we talked a little bit today about, okay, here's your atomic particle, which we absolutely will with Valentina, but then how do you get that out there? How do you then build a to- an atomic particle and build a network? So Valentina, I will start this series, this episode today with you with two buckets, okay? Not one, two buckets. One is when you envisioned yourself as the producer, as the movie maker, as the storyteller that you are today, how much time did you spend on figuring out internally what you wanted to do, the things you wanted to do, and then almost simultaneously build a network that can aid that? It seems like you're always two people, right? The introvert and the extrovert from my conversations with you. So how did you do that? Did you do that? Did you do that with intent or did it just happen? Well, uh, thank you so much. And and how exciting to be with both of you at 8 a.m. talking about such amazing universal topics. Uh, this really challenged my mind in a beautiful way. Well, I, you know, I, there is a phrase that I always use that uh, like in Harry Potter, uh, it is said that it is the wand that choose the wither and never vice versa. And I really do believe in that kind of creative process. So I do believe that in the, in the heart and soul of a, t- a storyteller, is the fact that you start a journey and and you have to keep that kind of freshness. Of course, there is some planning in the sense that you know your goal. 
you know your arrival, you have this feeling of this, uh, uh, of this creation sort of saying, you kind of see it like a painting. It happens to me and I have a background in design, so I'm painting. Uh, so obviously I, I see it in that sense, but the journey is never fully planned. It comes to us because if we have our core connected to the final vision and to our heart, our emotion, our system of being, the journey gets sculpted and crafted day by day. And you have to trust the process. Trusting, I think, is, uh, is the word to use when, when we uh, carve the path, when we choose our network, our network, what what is it exactly choosing our network? As I as I was thinking just before, do we take a notepad and we say, okay, this friend, yes, this friend, no, this, this, right. not really, not really. But we are connected to our core. We we feel that sensation that gets us going. And I always use a, a good word that is enthusiasm. You know, enthusiasm is a word that comes from ancient Greek and means to be inhabited by the gods. And what a fantastic, brilliant way of being, right? Uh, that you feel this kind of burst of energy, of light that carries you through and you trust it because they are the gods within you. It's with you, it's you actually. So if you feel that kind of energy and you trust it, you know that this journey with the bumps and with the prairies will lead you to that final vision, you know, that, uh, that is the, the final goal of your creation, your manifestation, your project, uh, wherever you need uh, to achieve. For me, it's a film or a documentary right. nowadays. And, um, and so in that sense, uh, did I chose to be a producer? Not really. It came to me through a sad story, you know, uh, it, obviously, uh, we all know in here that my, my husband died, um, uh, of a heart attack while playing with our kids 10 years ago. And he was a brilliant actor and starting also to be a director and producer. Uh, it was the son of the iconic actor, Anthony Quinn, but an award-winning actor himself. And, uh, and that was obviously a very important moment in my life as much as tragic, but also revealing moment, you know, where, okay, what am I gonna do? And so I chose to do a TV series on cycling, which was his uh, favorite uh, uh, sport. And that led me to healing. So it came to me in an organic way, uh, just like anything in life, you know, most of beautiful thing comes very unexpected to us uh, and through process many times that do involve pain. Now in this journey, who are my allies, right? Uh, do I choose again on a notepad? No, but I do like, uh, I was dwelling uh, in these past days of, uh, to the idea of modern saints, you know, cause we have this idea in the, in the ancient past of this very elevated human being that have yeah. this uh, majestic power and, uh, and they could create miracles, right? But, but what's a modern saint? And we, I, I believe that we are all a little bit modern saint. I mean, what, what were these human beings? They were just human beings that did a, a million of mistakes, but, but they had a cause and they were uh, full of humanities. They were using their humanity, their ethics, uh, their, their uh, uh, human qualities uh, to expand outside themselves to help the others. And those, uh, this is the best definition I can find to be a, a, a modern saint. So in that sense, uh, I did uh, certainly uh, surround myself of those kind of uh, modern saints. And, and in a way, we are all uh, modern saints for one another. For some people, you know, we do elevate them. We do create a situation to help them out, to inspire them, to pull them out of a, a, a worse situation. And, and so forth. So in a, in a creative process, uh, we do find a way to be surrounded by what they are our modern saying that do protect 
our vision, that do elevate it, that do carry, and within doing, they carry you. So I, I really love that kind of idea. It's a companionship, but it's also being one together in having a vision. Okay, so what you laid out, I'll be honest with you, sounds terrifyingly intimidating. <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> so, so let's, uh, let's figure out how to, for the normal people, yes. right? like me, how do you get there? And I'll, I'll, give you to, I'll give you my gut reactions to, to what I would be intimidated by. Yes. Actually. Okay. Number one, number one period, point of intimidation is many people don't believe in the call. What you, the, the, your bucket one where you find your calling, you find your inspiration, you find your God, right? Yes. Many people, first of all, a lot of people I know don't believe in God. You know, they have to believe in something that's more rooted in the science of human energy. Yes. Because right? that's really fundamentally what it is. It's human yeah. consciousness has an innate energy to it. You don't know what the scientific, you don't know the scientific fact for it. But there is such a thing as the energy of consciousness, right? We know that if you put two optimistic people in a room together that something will happen. So we do know that. Okay. That's one, but it sounds horrifyingly intimidating. Like I said, um, to find that call. And the second thing is when you think about network building, right. And finding people that your modern, our modern saints, people who are advocates in a sense, Valentina, you do need a notepad and a, something to write it down because you can only spend concentrated time with, I'm gonna make this up, with 50 people, right? So at some point, somebody or something is gonna crowd, get crowded out by the, like I'm, I'm meeting you tomorrow for the first time. I want to know more about your modern sainthood, but I also know consciously that something will have to be sacrificed as I spend the time getting to know you, right? Yes. So, but let's confront that, right? Yes. Let's not assume that we can just keep expanding and expanding our network without any consequence. Yes, no, I completely agree with you, Amrita. First of all, certainly the process of creation is a very intimate process. So the process of creation requires for us to be within on a first phase where, where you cannot be just with crowd and, and just expanding, right? So we actually cautiously take time to stay within, to craft this image that we have. And, uh, and we know that is delicate. We know that is a fragile process and a fragile vision. So we trust those few people that we know we resonate and that we can all uh, uh, relate to this, right? We have a good idea. We have uh, uh, some beautiful news to tell. You don't go in the piazza, in the square and, 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 uh, and uh, shout it loud. You go to your best friend, you call your best friend and you say, you know what happened, you know, da, 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 da. You know, right? Because there is that fragility, that, that sense of enormous respect towards uh, the process of creation so and that we can all relate so uh, i i think uh, we are all with me right yes, but, yes. Uh, so yes. that that is the premises now said that we do also have to allow to stay open because many time our best idea whether we are painting, making a film, uh, reading a script, uh, having an idea comes not from the place we put in the notepad. It's in between the space of what we wrote. So that needs to be known. And in terms of scary, who says is a bad thing? We are all scared. Talk to the Olympic uh, 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 gymnast, and I was one of them. We were, I was terrified every time I was in the back in the green room before of the race. Who said that you have to feel just great and fantastic and know you win? You're terrified. But at the same time, you keep that vision 
very tight inside while being terrified. Terrifying is good. Get what? Guess what? Everybody, the painter in front of a white canvas is terrified. The director in front of starting a film is terrified. The actor before he starts his scene and think, oh my God, I forgot the lines, you know, is terrified. Terrified is a process of creation. So rather than feel it's such a bad thing, I should feel just fine and just great, accept it, embrace it, and cuddle with that. Yeah. Because it's part of the process. Terrifying is actually something that I spot right away when something is of interest to me. A subject, a film, a script I read and terrifies me. Why? Because maybe I don't know enough. Uh, I can see it's going to be a very challenging journey. That's actually what... Uh, uh, brought me to do, to produce the documentary One Rock Through Religions, which is an award-winning documentary about peace in the Middle East that won the US Congress Award, the Human Rights Award, and other, I think, 15 international awards. So that documentary made me feel terrified at first because it was such an important topic, peace in the Middle East, starting from the Temple Mountain in Jerusalem. Oh my God, I didn't grow up in Israel. I didn't grow up in Palestine. What I know is from the news. So that means I don't know much. I will have to research in Osmosley. I have to prepare myself to interview people like uh, President Shimon Peres, President Mahmoud Abbas, uh, the Pope Francis, uh, and on and on and on. So it terrifies me because the, the massive amount of work and topic that I have in front makes me feel so little. But that sensation of feeling so little is actually a great thing. If we can embrace that fear is part of hope, fear is part of winning the Oscar, fear is part of the goal at the Olympic Games. So rather than feeling is an enemy, feel that is the, the medicine, the ingredient that is needed to propel you towards hope, yeah. towards fear your is goal. Good. Fear is so, good. The, we spent a lot of time you know, on this, a series about fantasy bubbles, right? When you think about this idea that brings fear, that brings intimidation, how do you choose? Because this, a lot of what we're talking about today is choice. Yes. How do you choose those fantasy bubbles that bring fear, bring intimidation on the one hand, but you know that there is a possibility of it happening. So for instance, I will never be a basketball player. I'm horrible, horribly feared by the idea. How do you know which one is, um, has a probability versus not? Is, is, the, is the mathematical analysis of probability another ingredient alongside fear when you choose your ideas that you're gonna get behind? I would say, first of all, know your strength. Yeah, you yeah. know your strength, right? I mean, uh, a basketball player knows that uh, his uh, physical strength, his high, uh, uh, his height is are, are two very important ingredients, right? Uh, you know, so a, a short uh, uh, person usually would have less chances to go into their career. Know your strength is. Uh, the basic for everything, you know? So put yourself in a category, into a path the, where you know you have some strength. Yes. And that's the base, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And usually, you know, the beautiful thing about being human being is that we discover our strength pretty early on as kids. I mean, I discovered that I was uh, great at drawing. I was three years old. I still have my a kid's book where I was trying to do portraits with the, a million head circles that had to be perfect to then to draw the eyes and the mouth because that was the idea. I have to do a portrait of the people I have in front. So I, I know that I was connected to that vehicle of creativity, you know, and, and they find us. They find us. They're within us. We resonate uh, to sports, uh, to writing, to to things, to science, to, uh, you know, 
all kind of different topics and they find us much before that we can even think about them. So trust that, know your strength. And then at the same time, allow this path to be open, allow to fear the fear to happen. Connect to, so, connect to your strength and embrace fear. It's, yes. It's phase one. Yes, and remember one thing. Uh, any big goal will uh, will include the fact that you will have to stretch out of your comfort zone. Very important. People want, wish to always stay in the comfort zone, but that won't happen. Uh, if you do have a goal, you have to prepare yourself to allow yourself to feel scared to be out of your comfort zone, to need to learn and be humble. I saw so many people, extremely charismatic and talent, talented, uh, not willing to feel humble in order to learn and expand and failing, fail just out of that, that small part of the whole ingredient list was missing. So it didn't matter how much talent they had, how many helps and, uh, and modern saying they had next to it, how much uh, charisma and, and uh, possibilities the person had, but he didn't have the humility to feel learning, to feel scared, to be humble in front of uh, the goal he wanted or she wanted to achieve. And that made them fail. So I always start with, uh, okay, it's okay to be scared. I don't know much. And, uh, you know, my first fear when I start the film is like, oh, my God, it's so massive. Oh, my God. Okay, so now I'm going to have to travel in the Middle East. I'm going to have to involve these people. And, and why they would believe me and why they would get with me. And it looks like this big thing, not a monster but something very close to it you, because fear makes us feel very small. But what about feeling, okay, yeah, okay, that's okay. By now, you yeah. know, after so many films and experience like that, I'm feeling, okay, that's okay. actually a good sign. We can do you are in the good path. You must feel intimidated in front of the goal you want to achieve. Otherwise, it's not a goal. Okay. So I, I want to touch uh, one one area that that you you mentioned both of you. I think I think probably um, I share with you, um, Valentina, probably the passion because I, I was educated by very religious people. So yeah. for me, it was kind of a, it gave me a sense of invincibleness, but as well a sense of uh, of hope in absolute. Uh, because I think one of the things that we have, especially in the Western world right now is the sense of collapse of uh, narratives. And I think Amrita just touched, just touched that probably with her LA American hat and probably me and you, Valentina, although with different backgrounds, but you Italian, me Portuguese, a bit French, we have all this kind of, as well, a sense of history that is much bigger. So um, I think touching this part of the, the, the sense of uh, saintedness or whatever we call it, but I think there's one big part of that is the sense that if you look at the narratives of the saints in history, at the moment we have the narratives of the influencers, of the uh, actors, celebrities, directors and producers, which we are all part of that effectively, because we are the iconographies of our times. Uh, but at the same time, these iconographies are done in a slightly different way, because at, at, in the past there was a sense of definitely if you were some kind of public figure you were representing some kind of authority some kind of holiness or stuff like that and at the moment you might just be representing some kind of silliness or some kind of provocation and so forth so this sense of uh, i would say mythical um absolute or a mythical leadership let's put it that way it's not present so much in our modern times and i think that's what we're talking about the fear and the hope because it's in a different context and i think you touch it both of you in different ways that are very powerful so i'd like to hear probably from you um um, um valentina 
how do you see this? Because effectively, you are in a context of Hollywood that is creating the myths and the narratives and the personalities that are worshipped by billions of people. But at the same time, you are dealing with actually the most... Uh, I think your films are not context of blockbusters in the sense of conventional. Of course, they became quite successful films. So you are as well provoking the narrative. And I think this, this is quite important for this podcast because I think this is the biggest challenge of our times because we have all this technology, all these things, but people are going empty. And I think it's like, uh, in one end, we try to replace it with science, but we actually became more in the sense of almost a kind of a cynical look at the world, which is the worst thing, because if you get the cynicism, then we lose everything. And then we don't have hope. And not even fear, we become kind of numb. So I would like to touch this, because for me, this is actually the probably the finding your atom of the, the 21st century of humanity at the moment. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, yes, modern saint. Uh, we, we looked at this, uh, you know, I have this vision because I come from Italy, from Florence. So, you know, one of the first place I was brought to, it was the Uffizi Gallery with this amazing, beautiful painting. And most of them, because the church was financing these great artists like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, they are about saints, obviously, because... Uh, the, 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 the church was financing these great artists. It was their way of, of having some bread on the table every day. And, and as a kid, you look at these figures, you know, they're saints. What, what distinguish me from this saint? Why, why this person has been put on the pedestal and is on the painting at the Uffizi Gallery? And why me? I was not. But these were human beings. So what did they have so special? Did, were they like supermen that suddenly they had a special power I don't believe exactly that. I do believe that we are all modern saints and the, the point that elevates us is to, uh, to express some of our quality at a bigger level, you know, the sense of, uh, of uh, helping others, uh, being ethical. I mean, it takes a lot of efforts. Even if you're a good person, let's say, you know, but it takes a lot of effort to have a full day. Let's just take 24 hours and know that you're doing good every single moment. From the moment that you're nervous, maybe you woke up too early and you feel like, oh boy, no, I'm not going to take this phone call, you know, and you almost have an attitude, you know, because you're nervous, you haven't took the coffee, whatever, you don't have the right makeup, uh, you know, you feel ugly, you know, just little things like that. Now take it, take that day and feel like, okay, I'm gonna be just good <laughs> from the first moment. And every human being I will interact, I will be just, uh, just perfect and just good. Having my best part of me given for the other person, you know, and that, that's already challenging in 24 hours. But let's let's take it a little farther in a, in a process, you know, like a film. You know, I, I've done a couple of years ago a film that was called La Wonderful Losers, uh, and it was candidate for an academy and won many awards. Uh, uh, and it was a documentary film about uh, cycling, and about uh, the gregarios in cycling. The gregarios are those cyclists that do everything to protect the winner in their team, the one that is chosen to be the captain and help him to win no matter what. So these guys uh, are there to support, to cover him from the wind, uh, from the rain, uh, from the adversary that uh, try to cross over in, in the steep hill they they cycle in front of them so that they create a, a wind tunnel for them to cycle faster. They carry all the bottles, the sandwiches, the power bar on their back uh, on, on uh, all the road so that the captain will have nutrition, will have everything. And those people are never supposed to win. Even if the Gregario, one of them, uh, goes first and arrive almost to the arrival first, he will slow down and have the captain surpass him and win. Now, that's why wonderful losers, because they're never recognized for what they do, right? And how many times we are wonderful losers in life, fighting for a cause that we're not recognized for, but we allow somebody else to win. We support somebody else in, in their winning, in their cause, in their journey. So that's for me is a modern saint just a normal human being with their defect, their qualities, their days up and down, but 
having the purpose to feel like I want to help somebody in their journey. And that doesn't mean that that journey won't be bumpy and that uh, all the words that will come out of my mouth will be just heavenly. That doesn't exist. We're human beings again. I am sure that all those saints, you know, were, were also having moments of despair, of doubt, of nervousness and fragility, and, and they had their ups and downs. But overall, that feel that the intent of wanting to help somebody else in the journey is it was uh, uh, so so uh, winning so much bigger than anything else so that is what uh, what i look for also when when we do a film you know i am uh, a gregario because i stayed behind the scene when the actor is on the scene and and acting and i try to support that moment of, of uh, greatness where the actor is uh, doing his craft and he's giving its best and the director is directing and I'm in behind, but I'm pushing those people to win, you know, and other time is vice versa. They are helping me to get my vision, my goal, which is having this great film tell this amazing story when they know they have to do their best, their very best, no matter what's happening in their life. I've saw actors, uh, you know, performing after their mother died and yet being in there and doing their very best to give their performance, to give that feeling, to help this movie, this vision come forward and be finished. So we are all modern saints. We are all those people that help a cause, help a friend, and, and in recognizing it will help us to be better human beings, will help us to create a better vision in the goal that we want to achieve or somebody else will want to achieve. You know, there's, there's a, from what you're saying, there's a lot of similarities to what you're saying on how a heist works, right? So when you look at these, the heist movies, you think of they set the goal, the, the MacGuffin, the, the thing they're gonna steal, right? And here, what you're saying is let's steal the big idea and get it from the universe. Let's put the beautiful movie out there, beautiful work of art. But then in a heist structure, you find that people spend an equal amount of time on recruitment. So what I wanna pivot to Valentina, and this may require our next episode is how do you then it seems like you've mastered the ability to recruit for the project. So I have a friend who really wants to be the best immigration attorney ever in, in Texas. I, and I, this is actually a true story. And we spent a lot of time on how do you recruit for, you know the idea, how do you recruit? To me, it seems like you have, you have really nailed this concept of recruitment around the idea. The thing I want to talk about in the future is how do you recruit then for the idea of yourself and are they related, right? So you have the idea of your project, you have the idea of yourself, your identity, and then there's this process of, okay, I got to build my friend, my networks. I got to build the network for the, for, the, for the project, for the job. And then simultaneously, I got to build the network for myself, for my own happiness, you know? You touch a very important topic, Amrita. In fact, uh, you know, and I like the, the example of the immigration attorney, you know, because uh, I am actually working right now for an amazing company, Joblio, that does help uh, immigrants uh, from the third world countries to find work and a better life in an ethical way in other countries. And uh, you know that uh, all the human trafficking, child abuse, et cetera, happens from immigration, from people from third world countries in better country that could offer a better life, you know. So uh, I, I take that example very closely. Uh, and uh, so I would say, you know, if you want to be a better immigration attorney, go and hang out with the immigrants. That's what you do. You want to be a better artist, hang out with those artists. But what is the topic in being a better artist? What do you wanna do? You wanna do films and documentary about uh, what? What's your topic? Go and hang out, go on the side street and feel how they feel, see what they live, see what they do. You, it's, it doesn't happen on the desk. Recruitment. Attorney. 
Recruitment is being one of them. Recruitment means that you put yourself in the shoes of what you want to recruit, what you want to be seeing happening. Yes. I, the, the person that founded Joblio, this immigration company, is a refugee himself that was uh, that escaped Belarus at the time of the revolution and uh, found uh, shelter in Italy with his family at the age of 14, finally was given asylum in the US, eventually became an immigration attorney, but he knew all the journey as a refugee, as uh, coming in another country, what do you feel? What is the discomfort? Not finding your own people, not knowing the language. How do you find the work? How do you get the skills or being yeah. recognized the skills? So he knew all this process because he was one of them and hang out with them to the point of creating this global company. It, it is exactly the same process in whatever we do. You want to do a film, hang out with filmmakers. You want to do a documentary about the Native Americans? Go yeah. and hang out yeah. with them. I right. am in the process of doing a documentary with the Native Americans. And uh, before even I could get uh, all my money, all the, uh, the, the crew, all the permits to shoot in the reservation, I went. I hang out with them. I asked uh, kindly you know, almost invisibly. Can I be in your meetings? Can I be in your regular life? See and feel, eat with them, be, walk with them, live with them. Uh, when I did a documentary filming with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, rather than choosing to live in an hotel, I, lay, I lived with the monks and mm -hmm. woke up at 5 a.m. because you have to feel and be with them just by living with them, the life that they can, because then you get the inspiration, what it is, the texture, the, the, the feel of their life. Yeah. And then you so, so, uh, embodying them. Fascinating, fascinating. I, I want to provoke you on, on that level because yeah. I, I think the three of us are not conventional <laughs> because I, I believe we do whatever we want and we break any yeah. kind of rules in the sense, not in the bad way, but in the sense of, of like you said, just, just expanding our imagination, yes. our sense of purpose, and our adventure as well. But this is kind of, we are, let's, let's look at it in digital. I always bring the digital and technology, but if you look at the internet, 99% of the, the entire population of the world are passive, looking at people like us, and only 1% or even probably 0, 1% are creators like us. So my question is, and I think then we are touching another element that is very important and therefore my provocation. Most of people, uh, in your case, and I think in my case, I feel that completely fear is a canvas where we actually somehow paint hope. And the, the, the fear is just the focus that makes us really look at the canvas more deep. And then we paint the hope according to our sense of imagination, our sense of getting out of the box. But the rest of the world at the moment is in a very paradoxical situation. And this is probably in history. But I think the question is, how can we somehow create this sense of hope for people that don't have probably the economical or that have yes. other problems that are economical, yes. that are psychological, that are, um, well, a lot of other things of exploration and so forth. And actually, even people, we are very accomplished people, all the three of us, but this is not the, the, the matter. So I would like just to touch this part. How do you transform this for people listening to us? And I'm sure even people very successful, like you said, Valentina and Amrita, it's not easy to do what we do. And we have always to push ourselves. But the point is that the other people are not even pushing the, themselves a bit. And that actually is the biggest challenge that I, I think I would like to share and provoke I, our I, audience I, and, Dennis, and the three of us. I, I would add to that, Dennis, that I think the, con the fear is so monumental that it's just, it's, people can't handle yes. it, right? Um, let so me tell you, go ahead. Ahead. Let me tell you a story, because I like that, you know, we're not all filmmakers, we're not all Oscar winners or, you know, uh, whatever, we are accomplished uh, people with very special work and careers, you know, that gets award. And I love that, you know, and I, I, I always tell a story when I speak, uh, when I'm invited to speak, uh, that uh, relates to everybody, you know, because uh, when, uh, when uh, Francesco died, you know, he died of a heart attack in front of our kids and suddenly, so it, it, I wasn't certainly prepared. And uh, 
and uh, on the bedside table uh, after he died, uh, there were still his reading glasses just uh, sitting in there. And every night before to go to sleep, I would take these glasses and hold them really tight like a handle that would prevent me from falling. And, uh, and night after night, I would take these glasses and hold them tight until one day I took the glasses. I opened my hand and I put them down. I decided, you know, that I wasn't willing to just feel like falling every day because that was the sensation after he died. I was so lost. I was so terrified about living life, about continuing that it felt just like my life is falling. I'm falling. I don't have ground anymore. So I, I was holding to these little glasses, just like a reminiscence of my past, of something that I knew made me feel secure, made me understand who I was. I had a place in life. I was with this guy. We had the kids. We had a career. We had the life that was built. And suddenly everything was in the air and destroyed. Okay, yeah. so those glasses, although it's a, such a symbolic small thing, were the symbol of that security. And I was holding tight to that security until that day that I just decided to put them down and decided to fall. It's okay to fall. It is from this simple symbolic gesture that doesn't have anything to do with big careers, with Oscars, with uh, great fancy uh, awards and film festival, none of it. It was a simple, very humble gesture that we all feel in our life. We all have that moment in our life that made me propel. From that moment, one month later, I created Queen Studios Entertainment, and in a year, we had our first film candidate for an Academy Award. Now, as I say, always, not nobody, not everybody, can relate to the Academy Award, to the film, to the Oscar. I mean, the Hollywood, but we all can relate to that gesture because we all have that moment of realization in life where it's okay to be afraid, and I'm gonna do it anyway. And it doesn't matter if the goal is simply to decide to go back to study or to choose another work or to just, I'm going to wake up this morning and I'm going to go to work instead of leaving depressing in, depressed in my bed, right? Yes. It doesn't matter the stature of the goal, as long as it's a goal in your personal life. For some people that suffer from depression, just to wake up and just go do shopping or go to work, you know, dress up. It's a big goal. Mm. So that's why I tell that story to let them understand that really there is no different in the process or because just one goal is bigger than the other. There is no difference. It is the process that counts. It is the awareness that that moment arrives to everybody, the stimulus yeah. to that moment does arrive to everybody because that's the magic of being a human being in a process of living. Well, I, think, I think you've uncovered what the, the core of all the mythologies that have been is the point is the suffering. The, the, whether you think it's a myth or not, the point is Jesus carrying the cross. And walking. The point is the process, and the process involves challenge, and the challenge is about being afraid Perfect. and a, a certain way of going through the threshold. You know, yeah. whether if you look at yeah. the couple stories, you know, yeah. that now they got picked up by Disney and, and they're there from exactly. the Snow White, uh, Beauty and the Beast, whatever, they have that process. Of of course of transformation and transforming ourselves to see things in a different way is a process that does involve enormous amount of fear and challenge but the transformation and the result is fantastic even if it gets you to go to the shopping mall and buy groceries or uh, facing a new project writing a book, getting a new job that is more exciting, uh, you know, forgiving your, your family or, and, and, and go forward, you know, or winning an Oscar. Why not? You know, but the process is exactly the same. 
So no, no need to say, oh, well, it's easy for her. You know, well, you know, she, she, she got to such levels or it's easy for him. You know, it's an Olympic player. No, no, no. The process is the same. And I guarantee you that each of those people that we consider big people, you know, uh, celebrities, big names or saints, saints, they're just human beings. They went through the same exact process. And I guarantee you in the morning uh, or, or during the day or in the night, they had a moment just simple like my glasses and hold them and deciding to let them go. That kind of, they, they made them identified. Okay, this is a shift. And from this, I can walk one step at a time forward. Yeah. So. It's, it's much more humble than we think. Dennis, I know we don't have that much time, but one thing I'd like to cover sort of in preparation for our next meeting with Valentina is this idea of the uh, personal network. Because I, I feel like we have a really good discussion around the core idea, the, the atomic particle, the, the concept of fear, the concept of having a, um, a goal, which is achievable. But then this concept of recruitment yes. on a truly personal level is something I, pe I think people are very, very, most people that I know, recruitment is something they feel happens to them. Go seek a friend is something that they're not accustomed to. Recruitment is something that is a passive experience versus an active experience. So I think I'd love to touch on that and we'll touch on that even more in the, in the next few. Yes, well, certainly there is awareness. Yes, many things come to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to meet beautiful people because we are there, we are open, yes. we are aware, we resplend of the inspiration we have inside towards a topic, a people, a way of living something, an experience. And so things start to propel and revolve around us. Now said that, there is a lot of things that propel, propel and revolve around us. Us, right when we navigate we travel we have an idea and in that moment it's very important to be grounded to really understand you know in the crowd who are the people you know the cartoons you know the people that moves a lot and say a lot of things and those one that can really ground you while being grounded themselves uh, help you and uh, and uh, teach you and teach you very important don't choose the people that are easy because that may you make you it makes you feel very very good and very very big i always choose people that knows tons much more of myself just like right now you know uh, I, I know that uh, in in your fields and stuff you know so much more than me and i love that because okay i'm put in a contest where i'm obliged to learn i can learn i can grow i can uh, observe these people and take something you know that i didn't know so very very important at a professional level at a personal level you have to be aware of ethics you have to be aware of what supports you and how you support them and keep a code of ethics nowadays is too much in fashion to um to gossip, to uh, put down a person, to trash a thing. And the social media uh, did uh, a lot of bad into that because it facilitated that uh, process of just uh, trashing an opinion in, yeah. uh, in a couple of words, you know, comment on something, you know. And I love social media in many, many senses, but in that sense, it allows insecure opinion and moods to be propelled globally. So that is something you, we, we have to watch and be careful and choose the people that can support you. And of course you should support them and choose to keep your mouth shut if you see something wrong, not just to comment, but keep the circle open. 
then get all your friends to speak. You know, I always say, I'm not going to be always right. There is no way. Even if I am a modern saint or if I think I'm right, there will be things that I don't uh, see. In a set, oh my God, I mean, you stay two months, a year on a project with so many people and you have pressures, you have tiredness, you travel, you think. Not always you see everything, you know. It just happened to me. I had an occasion where the person misunderstood. We sent the contract. The contract was around. So what? I wasn't fully aware. I've, wake me up. I'm supposed, if I choose right the people, talk to me always. Be open to talk to, and know that I'm a human being just like the other. It's not because I'm the producer or I have a position of relevance that I'm supposed to know every everything. I'm just a human being. Everybody is. As long as things are said in a circle open, in a constructive way, look, this wasn't right for me. This wasn't uh, properly handled. Can we look at it in a different way? I have this idea, you know, I felt uh, that way. Can we do something about it? That is the base and needs to be respected. That is at the base of selecting your network. What kind of network it is? Is it supportive? Then all that network will say things in front and will contribute to the construction, not the destruction, the destruction of every chapter, of every project, of everything, right? Yeah. That's something that we have to be very aware. And, you know, there are moments where people are tired and we make mistakes and maybe we make a common stuff. Those times, take back everybody in and regroup. If you are a leader, a producer is always the one that puts everybody together. Yeah. They think it's a, right. such a, the producer is the king. No, right. the is the one that, that, that wash all the dirty clothes, right? right? That puts That's everybody right. together again. Yeah. That resolve all the crisis, how? Put That's right. Bed and listen. Listen to the people, put them back together, you know, and, and, and get them working together again. Because we will all make mistakes. And so what? Then what do you do? You know, unless there is that kind of open dialogue, there, there, there is no, 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 no way of, uh, of moving forward. So those are the things that I think they are the most important. And, and the one that we should know and that we should make it very clear right away because fragility, insecurity, tiredness are attributes that we all embody at times in our journeys, in our lives and stuff. But the capability of regrouping all together, there is an African uh, way uh, belief that when a person make a mistake, is being it gets to be put in the center of a circle and the people around remind him of his goodness that's not bad acting they remind him how good it is and how great he is and the great quality he has and stuff to bring him back that's because there is a belief mm -hmm. in the african uh, uh mythology that uh, the human being is uh, good at his core and he's just uh, uh, facing, you know, phases, moment of lostness where he loses uh, his way. So remind of the way that is our job in life, at work and choosing a network for a project. I mean, it, it's amazing that these very advanced thoughts and practices have been around for so many years in the oldest of cultures. And we still have the amount of warfare and genocide today. And that this collective spirituality that humanity has hasn't been able to tackle it, you know. And it's um, you know, it's 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 fascinating. It's it's just a it's a comment on how when somebody be, has the wrong idea, how powerful that in and of itself can be. Definitely, and I won't touch the politics because it's such a wider range. Yeah right now and so many people do touch politics and I have to be very humble. I don't know much about politics. Uh, you know, I, I haven't studied each and every uh, countries and situation enough uh, to be a good speaker, but I can speak at uh, a personal level, at a human level, at the level of creating a project, creating an activity. Uh, and, and in that sense, uh, 
uh, you know, this common practice and ethics put at work do work. They, they work. They do work. They are very simple. They are very linear, and they do work. Keep the communication open. Keep your circle open. Yeah. Explain that uh, you are willing to talk and you're open to listen. And if that is repeated and done day after day, the team follows. The, the team align itself to that kind of practice every day and they feel good about it. Yeah. You know, and then we are all modern saints. Well, Valentina, I think you should do a workshop. Like a, I don't know. I mean, you don't have time, but this is stuff that it's like true yeah. nuts and bolts career building ideas here that I think like my friend who is a immigration attorney, I think this would be so profound for her practice. You know, it just isn't applicable for filmmaking. Um, but you probably no, but don't I have think, time right now. <laughs> I have no, but I think, I think many, this... many things, but uh, you know, if I can share and learn every day, whether with a big team in a movie set, with a crowd, or just simply with myself and the few people around me, uh, that's enough of a school. You know, we go to school every day, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, we are in a school called life. Yeah, I want to touch one thing as probably as a wrap up. You, you touched the, the part of personal ethics, and I completely agree with you because this is, I think, the success of the three of us and I think the people that are within our networks and I think the success of anyone is about how you handle personal ethics. And I think, for instance, I'm ready to touch the, the challenge that this, I think most of the things that we're talking about are really million, million well, we have thousands of years. Um, but I think it's the same point. is is about the continuous uh, effort to get a personal ethics and the personal journey that keeps pushing our boundaries. The, the idea of fear and how we, we draw the fear in our canvas of our lives and we get out and make it hope. But I, I would like to touch this part of personal ethics because I think it's one of the biggest challenges is that most of people get drowned. And I think, of course, some people become monsters because their personal ethics became, become to poisons, uh, poison or as well toxic. And I think this is as another element. But at, at the same time, it brings us the concept of absolute hope and the concept of a narrative that is a personal ethics, but a personal um, enthusiasm coming to the, the Greek work, a uh, word that is very beautiful, like you mentioned, Valentina. So in, in terms of personal ethics, yes. I mean, listen, it, 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 is, it is tough to be always good, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, we, are, we have a good core, but boy, life challenges, you know. Yeah. You receive the wrong bill. Uh, it's a job. <laughs> you fight with your boyfriend you fight with your daughter uh, your parents are sick and you are away far away and you can go life challenges you I mean there are mornings I wake up and I'm like oh god give me some hope in here, right? <laughs> give me something okay Let's start from a good yeah. coffee, right? So, you know, yeah. the right. coffee is everything. <laughs> Let me start from a good coffee. Stay there. In that moment, I, I always, what gets me out, it's never the big miracle that never happens. It's not that it never happens. Let me, let me rephrase it. It does happen, but not likely always to happen every morning, right? So we can count on that. If it happens, the big miracle that something, you win the lottery. Somebody calls and everything is just fine and wow, you know, that help, it happens 1%, 2%, 3%, let's give it 5% because I'm a positive person. The rest of the time, you got to pull up yourself. Let's face it, you know, so it's the bad morning, you arrive and there is a horrible bill on your table that you didn't expect. Your car breaks down and you're late. You had this amazing appointment, you're going to have to cancel or start because car doesn't start. You know, your daughter calls you and you're like, mom, da, 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 you know, you're never there for me, da, 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 da. you know, kids, teenagers, you know, <laughs> something. And your parents are away and suddenly they're like, I'm at the hospital, you know, and you feel like, whoa, what a what, what a day, oh my, oh my God, I just need what? My boyfriend now is gonna call, my husband is gonna call and 
and boom. And of course, that day is the day that he's going to call you or do something <laughs> that is terrible, right? <laughs> what you do? At that point, you're like, you feel like, oh my God, my mountain is crashing. Nothing is going to work out. Okay. Then I say, start from the coffee. It doesn't mean that if it's a coffee or if it's a, the, the cookie or if it's a, I'm going to take a hot shower for a minute. Get on the treadmill. Remember that it, it, in any story, in, ev- in any tales, this story starts from the little stones that gets you to the castle, that gets you to the big win, right? From the, the little the little shoes, the little thing, there is the fairy tells you in the back of the, it's little things that create back the path to salvation, to positivity, to create. So I try in those days that happens to everybody, we're all human beings, just the same. Start from the little thing, whether it's uh, the, uh, the coffee in the morning, the little walk, uh, call your best friend, uh, take a good shower. Know that that little thing will ignite a better system. And from that little thing, you start again and be willing to take the time, you know, it's going to have to reset this bad day. It's okay. It's part of the school. It's not the end of the world, you know? And pretty much everybody had those days and can testify that those days then were gone and there were better days. So know it. It's not going to be forever, right? Just start with the little things. That will help to create a path of, of good things. And in that sense, of course, your good circle, inner circle will help you. If you select it properly and you stated and ignited a healthy way of being together with your uh, family work network, with your family uh, work at home sort of thing, uh, that will help you to create that process, to reset and new to them when it happened to one of them. Absolutely fascinating. I, I, we have a book here. We have a book and a speak, speaker series and a TV show right here, Dennis. <laughs> now, this is very, very inspiring, but as well, very special. And I think for people listening to us, this, I, I think um, you, you said something very beautiful, Valentina, and in, 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 well, a, a lot of things as well. I love the, the enthusiasm, but as well what you said about the idea of the, it's the power of a story that counts, what counts. And I think it's, it's what you're talking about is, what are our stories? How can we actually make this story special? But as yeah. well, I'll keep our personal ethics and our personal persistence as well, because this doesn't happen by accident. And I think people listening to us, as I think especially at, at the moment, of course, even with the, the present war, we are probably in one of the most calm places in history yeah. of humanity. Yeah, we, we forget are. that as well. We are. Um, we are at the most peaceful time in the history of humanity. At the same time, we've experienced as a globe, the first truly interconnected global crisis in COVID. The first truly interconnected spiritual crisis the world experienced together, right? During During the time of the most peace humanity has ever had. Very much so. And again, I challenge everybody to not get sucked in by the fact that we are living into this terrifying time. I always remember having watched a documentary about Holocaust survivals. And uh, there was this little man, this was about the Holocaust survivors in Italy, which many people don't know about it, but uh, there was a a lot of it happening. And this uh, little old man was saying, you know, we were all put uh, in Auschwitz and uh, I saved my people. We got saved, we survived because I instated a, a way in the morning, I would woke up and I would start whistling. I would whistle a beautiful song to start the day because the day was so harsh. It was so cold. We were with cotton shirts in 10 degrees and more below zero with the snow. There was no heater. Uh, the food was so scarce, but I can say that my shelter 
my 20 people, 50 people in the church that got saved because I instated this system where I would wake up and I would whistle a beautiful song. I would always forget this little thing, you know, right? This very tiny little thing, you know, that can, can help you really to instate a, 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 a different way of being through a crisis. So through a crisis, you know, if that guy, those people, even in the Holocaust, let's take a very good thick example of tragedy because we're not certainly in there. So let's take a bigger one so we can rebalance where we are at right now in life in the global community. If those people could find hope in such a horrifying situation, I can't think about anything more terrible than the Holocaust. Uh, they found it in a whistle in the morning we can certainly find it right now. Through the lockdown, I always say, I decided to work, to travel and everything. Yes, it's true, I had two passports, but I could have done it even if I didn't. I decided to work, of course, I was respectful of all the rules and whatever needed to be done. But I, instead of feeling down, get sucked in by, the media, the fear, everything that was projected to us, I decided to stay on the creative process and, and flew with that. Went in another country, did partnership, finished films, did amazing event at Venice Film Festival, uh, started to recruit again, my positive, my uh, supportive network. Who are my allies in here? Okay, I have this friend in France. I have these friends in here. Some I don't have friends, I'm gonna make them. Let me go in this country with the occasion. Okay, I was invited in the Middle East to speak at a Congress. Say yes, even if it's difficult right now traveling, say yes, you're gonna go, you're gonna make friends and do it anyway. Do it anyway, beat the system. There is no artist that didn't beat the system at his own time. Yeah. Dennis, what do you say? I think it's powerful words, uh, words and words. And I think it's, I think it's more about uh, how we can actually create our system and beat the challenge in the system. I, I'm completely subscribing this. Beautiful words and I think a lot of things to process. Um, I, I would say that it's, it's an honor to be with both of you here, but as well, this is actually is a, it's an exercise I love to do with Amrit and Latina. I think we'll we'll do it more often because it's a great way to ground us as well. Like you said, the sense of humility and groundness is really very important. We need to keep down to earth and keep uh, pushing forward. Dennis, when this is done, that when you have this uh, podcast wrapped up in one MP4, I want to send it to all my childhood friends this is the one really? <laughs> and we're going to cut, i think one of the things we're going to be doing is cutting small pieces and put it all over social media we did that with the volunteer we're going to do more because there's a lot of fantastic moments here that we've been sharing and i think it, in social media it works very well especially in instagram and on twitter for people listening to us but i think that's wonderful pieces of groundness and uh, inspiration that i think all of us need and like you said, even if it's millions of years of history or 30,000 years of history of Homo sapiens, we need to keep reminding us all days that Absolutely. we are still part of the universe. Well, Valentina, I can actually say I'll see you later because I am seeing you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow <laughs> with great pleasure. Yes. I'll see you later. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, Dennis. Well, thank you for this amazing opportunity to meet Valentina and to reconnect every week. Um, Very the next, good. Thank the next you. topic I do want to cover, just giving the audience a, uh, a heads up, is I want to cover uh, the, the notepad, which is how to recruit for your personal well-being. Because we haven't really, we haven't gotten into the... Into we have the, to dwell more inside, really. What's in the bucket? What's in that list? Yeah, what, what's on the list and what's not on the list? Definitely. And some are oh, yes. more at a personal level. So you know, you need to know your fears, your biggest uh, defaults, and have uh, some of your supporters have to be strong in that topic where you're not. That's and right. some instead, they have to be strong into more, maybe the work field, you know, some are more, you know, diplomatic uh, figures, you know, so 
there, there is a, a lot we can dwell into that uh, network list. Yes. And, and we will. Yes. Okay. Very right. good. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so I learned a lot. Appreciate from this. I appreciated it. No, completely. This is a wonderful moment as always and very, I think, disruptive in a wonderful way. I think let's make this a more visual habit. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye.